Hello everyone, and welcome to Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition, Lost Mine of Van Delver. I'm Ross, or R. D, your host and DM as always, and we're joined here by first time Dungeons and Dragons player, James. Hey. Say hello James, fantastic. Now, James, you, you'd, you've told me that your experience with Dungeons and Dragons is actually probably Lost Mine of more Van fuck. Delver. Fuck! Ah, I always do that. I leave my, I've got my dashboard open, and I always play my own sound back. So at the start of the video, every thirty seconds, after thirty seconds pass, everyone hears me say hello, everyone, and welcome. I never, <laughs> I never remember to, to not do that. Yeah, but anyway, you have probably more not gameplay experience as Lauren and Alan had played a little with myself, but more knowledge of Dungeon Dragons yeah. because you've you've watched a, a couple of YouTubers play. RPG, uh, tabletop RPGs. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, did you did you look over the Forgotten Realms in um, this bit here? Yeah. Let's yeah. How do we look over it? <coughs> Got so, it by the lower down. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's just your standard. You don't need to know too much about it. It's not going to be brought up very often, but it's your standard fantasy realm area. Um, you've got your your dragons, you've got your magic, you've got your knights, you know, your, your classic stuff. Uh, the area, the gameplay is specifically set in is at Neverwinter. Now, you see a big map in your screen of Run here? Yep. And it's up the top, right? Did you see my ping there? Neverwinter. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, that's it. So that's the area set in, part of the Sword Coast. And it's just generally like banditry area. It's not... Like, Neverwinter itself is, is one of the biggest metropolis uh, metropolises and it's currently like half under siege by a undead army, so we're not going to get involved with that at all. And we're immediately leaving oh. Neverwinter. So, so there's no, so it's I don't know why they they decided to start a campaign. Like I, this isn't my I should mention Lost Mine of Fandelver as an I didn't create this campaign. This is yeah. the the starter set um, for fifth edition, which is the newest edition of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and they release this and we'll play through this and then after this we'll continue on to the next campaign um, because and then we'll see after that whether we just play another campaign or if I'll play a freeform campaign but that'll take months awesome yeah um, so this this will probably take six six eh? well I'd say six but so far we've had two and we haven't gotten we've had to restart twice so it's meant to take around six sessions to play through, um, but maybe, maybe you know, we could be here next year going, right guys, we're having to restart again, <laughs> if we roll up characters. Um, yeah, so it's recently Neverwinter has just taken over, there was a huge kind of cataclysmic event with a volcano you can see on the map there, recently erupted, yeah. kind of the whole area's kind of disaster, it wasn't the best either, it wasn't like a, a kingdom that you could walk around in safely, you've got to expect raging orc armies and stuff like that, certainly somewhere where adventurers uh, even even they have to keep their lookout never mind just normal peasants um, and where we are in the story at the moment that you need to know about is you have decided for whatever reason to take up this job that was set out by a dwarf called Gundren Rockseeker now he asked you to escort a wagon to the town of Phandalin Right, let me just switch the map for you here, um, which is a, a little town about five days journey out from Neverwinter. It's a wee small mine time, mining town um, that's just starting up because, as yeah. you can probably tell by the clue of the title, someone's discovered a lost mine. Um, so <laughs> this, this mining is, is picking up around the Sword Mountains and that's what you're involved with really. Uh, Gundren was a little secretive about why he'd he wanted you to do this but you know there's there's going to be more work for you if you get there so it's not just a one mission go there and then you'll have to come back to never for something else which a lot of things are it's go there and Gundren's going to offer you more so it's not the best pain you but you will get paid so it's 10 gold pieces so for example if your character's doing just in it for the money that's you know a motivation for him or if he's in it because he wants to help out Gundren Gundren himself is a very famous not very famous, but he's a well-known dwarf, dwarf merchant, so his name lends itself to a lot of positive weight across many cities, across Sword Coast and around the world even. Um, so something to keep in mind as well if you're there to, if you've, if you've heard of Gundren before, if you've met him before. But what's happened, unfortunately for you, is for some reason you've missed 
the deadline. You were meant to be there uh, two and a half days ago at dawn. Um, and for some reason, we're going to have to come up with that. You, you you weren't there on time and you've had to chase after the wagon. Um, now obviously the wagon's pretty slow and you're going to catch up it when they're in the woods um, yeah. on the Triber Trail around here. Uh, that cool. doesn't look wooded, it's actually wooded. Okay, does that sound good? Yeah. Great. So what we'll do is we'll start the character creation process by rolling for your stats. Now on your character sheet here, go to the character sheet page and you can see the core stats. Yep. Now your core stats represent your character basically. So a higher, so do you know what they are? Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom and charisma. Yeah, I had a wee look over them pretty much. Um, I've got most of the tabs open as well just for the uh, descriptions. Yeah. Okay. See, look at this. Look at this, guys. People at home, pay attention. This is how you, this is how you, you, you read the PDF, you, you look up stuff for Brad, he's even got a character idea. It's great. Um, well, what we'll do is before, the first time they played through, I just gave them the numbers and they put in the numbers. Higher is better, obviously. Um, yeah. And you can see that there and the, the latest thing in the chat was the standard array. Um, however, because... They all died. I'm being a little um, nicer, and I'm because the the average of rolling for stats and the way you roll for stats is you do four uh, d sixes, so just normal sided dice, six sided dice, four of those, and you take the three highest, um, and that will all be done for you in a fancy macro. Um, so if you want to go ahead and click the cogwheel up the top, and you should see a new macro called stat roll. Uh, oh no you won't yeah. see that hold on let me visible to all players now you should be able to see it um, whereabouts again sorry so it's in your cog wheel with the scroll all the way up to the top cool uh, I see macros and add uh, uh, stat roll yeah yeah stat roll yeah so go ahead open that and then press like test macro and that should roll it Two seconds. oh yeah there you go and then come back into the into the chat no, you've rolled it twice. We'll, we'll go with the second, oh, yeah. second one. No. Actually, hold on. Just go go back into it and roll it. Hold on. Okay, yeah. now roll it again. Cool. Um, Just so we can tell. Right. So jump back into the chat, and then you can see your uh, your options. So you can choose any of those four. So you can choose the standard array, um, or any of the three that you've rolled there. Cool. And what you'll do is you'll take those numbers and then we'll put them in a way that represents your character best. And I think this is the best place to start. Often, I think in the book it says choose a race first, but I think people generally have a concept of what they want to be, whether they want to hit with swords. What are you thinking yourself? Um, are you going to shoot magic? Swords. Swords, bow. What was that, sorry? Dual wield. Dual wield, okay, cool. Um, so dual wield lends itself well to fighters and rangers. Um, I guess most most classes, every class can dual wield, um, but fighters get benefits, and so do so do rangers for dual wielding um, cool. because of the fighting style ability. So yeah, so for dual wielding, uh, you've got two options. Um, unlike you can either dual wield with finesse weapons, so those would be based off your dexterity. So higher dexterity does things like rapiers, things like you, you stab and then it's more finesse. Or you could dual wield with with strength, using your 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 brawn and your your might to to stab people with. Cool. Um, probably finesse. I'd imagine. Um, so then that. The... Sorry. Yeah. Uh, finesse, yeah, I would say. Okay, so that means you would want a higher dexterity then. So out of those three uh, choices you've got there, what one are you thinking uh, you want to go with? The 72, 78, 81 or 68? So basically the six numbers that each of these numbers consist of will be... Slotted down to the... Yep. So basically, yeah, that's cool. Um, I would say two seconds. Yeah, no problem. It's important. Yeah. <laughs> you can always move them around afterwards, so don't don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, before we're done, you can you can change anything. I would say the eighty-one looks more attractive because it's a good spread and it. I it's guess the highest. It's a, 
Yeah. <laughs> Adds up to the most. Yeah, okay, sweet. So you'd probably... The way it works in 5th edition is every even number is a change. So if you go ahead and, and put that 16 into dexterity, what you'll see is the modifier will change. And that's pretty much your primary... So if I ask you to roll a dexterity, anything to do with dexterity, like attack him with a finesse weapon... Um, uh-huh. So if you, if you stick that in, you'll see they use your modifier. So it'll be a d20, which is a standard dice for this. So attack rolls, okay. saving throws, everything's a d20. Um, I put 16 in, dexterity, and then, yeah. Yeah, so you should see it's changed to change the modifier to plus 3, to 3 yep. on next step. And that means dexterity rolls would be d20 plus 3. So the 16 is kind of relevant. I don't think it's been it's, it's ever mentioned, but that's how you derive the three. And the way it works yeah. is every for above ten, every even number is a new plus one to your modifier. It's ten, and then you divide it by two. That's how it works. Um, cool. So go ahead and, and slot all those in. High deck steady. Are you want to be just a straight up fighter, or do you think a ranger would be the way to go? I'm thinking ranger. I've heard Duncan's. A ranger, so I don't know about maybe. Hey, Duncan is is no longer a ranger. <laughs> he may have been. He may have been when you talked to him, uh, but <laughs> but they have since passed away. Oh, cool. oh okay, hey. that's fine. Yeah, I'd like to go for the ranger route. And you should certainly don't don't feel uh, worried at all about like Steph and other people. Uh, she was fifth edition. The way it's designed, um, you can have like a full party of the same class um, <laughs> and kind of work. Yeah, there was two rangers. I think the first time they did. But there's there's no range at the moment. Okay, so I believe there's a there's a wee summary and the characterization link that tells you a little bit straight out of the PDF there what a ranger is. A warrior who uses martial prowess and nature magic to combat threats on the edges of civilization. And in your PDF that you have open, um if you just do you have the bookmarks open? Can you go to bookmarks? Um, two seconds, sorry. I'll just get on that. I've got the imager with the classes. Yeah, you've got that one. Do you have the the player's handbook open? Doesn't matter if you you, you don't or not, but just I yeah, tell you where to look. Find the location of where I stashed it. I see. Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, I've got the I've got the book open. Yeah. Did do you have the bookmarks so you can jump to to things, or do you, can you just have to scroll through? It's page ninety, basically, is where rangers are on, and there is a like suggested quick build. So for rangers, wisdom is a. Uh, your spells, you get spells, not level one, but you get spells later on as a ranger. And yeah. those, your spells are better um, if you have higher wisdom. Not really better. The times it matters is if you're attacking something, so you're trying to hit something with your spell, um, then it might require an attack roll, in which case yeah. you'll need a higher wisdom will do you better. Or if they if you're doing something to the enemy that they get an opportunity to avoid or defend against, the word for that is save, um, then a higher wisdom makes it harder for them to save um, and so reduce the damage or, or avoid your spell. Yeah. So um, I'm just finding the Rangers page. Yeah. It's page um, page it's ninety what? in the bottom, like in the actual pages of the book. Page ninety. Yeah, cool. Um as I said, use the, I would use the if you've got bookmarks on the left, I'd click open the bookmarks and, and you yeah, can. This is just opened up through the the web browser oh, for me. The next oh, which is yeah. kind of annoying, but I can get out later on. Um, yeah, I've got the ranger page. Yeah. So so yeah, so that's kind of a rough a rough guide of what a ranger is. Warriors of the wilderness. Uh, they specialize in hunting monsters. Rampaging beasts, giants, dragons, monstrosities, things like that, and a lot about tracking these creatures through terrain, and that's pretty much what a lot of your ranger abilities would do. Um, you yeah. can have a low wisdom as a ranger, and what you do is you take buff spells, so spells that do not have attack rolls and do not do anything to the enemy that would require saves. Um, yeah. So it's up to you what kind of. It's harder to do that, so I'd recommend just having higher wisdom. Yeah. Um, well, I figure I'm going with mm-hmm. 81, so 16 dexterity. Mm-hmm. I figure wisdom's probably the next most important as a ranger, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would say I'd allocate that to 14. Okay. Um, I have to say a lot, a lot of you, and the rest of them is like all the all the same number. 
Three third toe. So really, <laughs> what are you worse at? Uh, and just to give you like a concept of what twelve means, um, ten is around yeah. average. Uh, like eighteen would be like the the best in the world, kinda. Yeah. Scale. Uh, it's not. It's not so much that anymore. It used to be the way back in the, the earlier editions that it was really like if you start if you went from eighteen to nineteen that was going from like superhuman to demigod but now it's kind of just steps up one at a time so it's not as much a uh, difference between numbers uh, but still 10 is average so basically i'm above average uh, uh, everything <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you're superior uh, um, but adventurers tend to be above average for everything uh, well, so where would you want the 12 to go and it won't actually make a difference in your modifiers, but it will make a difference when you get your racial bonuses. I would say charisma, just because I'd imagine my character is probably more along the lines of he's good at what he does, but he's lacking on the social side a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Only in reference to the rest is his, his uh, yeah. above average abilities. Um, no, of course, you can, you, can, yeah, you can role play it however you like. Okay, and, and what race are you thinking of then? I, when I was having a little look, I don't know if this is valid, but mm -hmm. the shifter. The shifter, okay, great. So, <laughs> you've, chosen a, you've chosen something I know nothing about. Um, let me look that up then. So, the shifter's unearthed. So, I just included all the races that are available. Um, yeah, no, I, I caught the shifter in your, in your um, descriptions. And then I was like, oh, that sounds really good. And I was thinking, well, if I'm a ranger and I'm out in the wild... It's got, like, shift... the beast hive cliff. What... Do you know what a shifter is? I'd imagine along the lines of a liking, almost. Humanoid. Yeah, some sort of weird creature. Uh, yeah. I have no idea, so let's... <laughs> this is something... Um, it's part of uh, Eberron, which is Unearthed Arcana. Hey, let's see if I can find... Just give me two seconds and I'll get the link and I'll send you it. Um, yeah. I've got everything bar the Unearthed Arcana. Cool. There you go. Is this it? Unearthed Arcana. Yeah, okay. So, a, sh a shifter are, are descended from humans and lycanthropes. Although they cannot fully change to animal form, they can take on animalistic features by a process they call shifting. Um, so, let me just send that to you on Facebook. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I'm totally okay with including those in the campaign. Uh, there's not a lot of details about them there. Um, but I think they're just just really a regular human, but they've got these extra abilities because of something that's maybe your mother was was bitten <laughs> from a, with the werewolf. Yes, perhaps, or, or some sort of, of thing happened in your. Uh... I love these. This is great. Cliffwalk. Your cliffwalk heritage grants you the agility of a mountain goat. <laughs> 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 that's great. I guess okay. it's claiming then. Yeah. When, that's that's very interesting on your yeah, shifting the other thing as well if I've read it right I've got to pick between a long tooth or a razor claw um, so did you actually look up th these before the shifter stuff um, when I caught with of it I, I, I googled it and I'm on Dungeons and Dragons 4 wiki oh you're in the 4th the edition okay um, yeah, so that's that's the older edition. So I sent you as I said the link in Facebook has the the recent. Yeah, stuff. no, I'm on I'm on the new one the new. Yeah. Um, but as I said, it just says long tooth or razor claw. It doesn't actually state pick one, I believe. But I think that's the way it should. Yeah, be. no, it's a safer sub race. Choose one of the options below. You do you do choose cool. one of those. So as a first off, um, as a shifter, your dexterity score increases by one straight away. Um, awesome. So go ahead and boost that by one. Your base walking speed is 30 feet, and that's over in the far right of your character sheet. You can see speed over there. Yep. Uh, two seconds. Sorry. Uh, speed. Yeah, on the far right. Okay. Um, 
and then you want to go into the background tab. Um, background tab, yep. And vision uh, on the bottom left is 60, uh, dark vision 60 feet, which means that you can see in the dark, uh, you can't see as well as you could in the day, like you'd only seen shades of grey and it still is, works as dim light, which means you get disadvantage on perception rolls which means it's harder for you to perceive things basically but it pretty much doesn't affect so make sure to put 60 foot dark vision is what you've got uh, in the vision I've got 60 and then just type dark vision next just to type it. dark yep 60 foot dark vision and that'll, that'll be on your token your character two seconds um, your known languages you start with common and sylvian so common's just a general like rough language that everyone in the world knows. Each area tends to have much uh, uh, more variety of languages. For example, in this area, people speak Shondathan. So all Shondathan people will be able to speak common, but you'll be an obvious outsider if you don't. Um, things like political or, or, or heavy economical things you might not be able to talk about like very specific subjects words in common won't exist for it um, yeah. it's very much a language that because the entire world knows it's, it's a lot more simpler than it is however depending on where you are born in the world and where you, you grew up I'll give you a language for free that's that's based on on where you it, it, it doesn't really come up very often I'm going to be honest um, but some, it's a little bit of flavour there okay cool. Let's see, I'll copy paste in um, this shifting ability, which is on your turn, you can shift as a bonus action. Shifting lasts for a minute, or, and the way it works is one round, there's 10 rounds in a minute, so each round is a, is a combat round, so you can attack, you can move, things like that. We'll run through combat um, at, before, we, before we finish today. Um, we'll, we'll put you through some actual fighting some random thing um, and you get temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution bonus and then you get a feature depending on the sub race so the sub race you were thinking of was long tooth or razor claw is that right yeah ideally um, yeah they look the most appetizing I would say so was the did the forty did the forty place did that um, describe it better than it is here? Because it's um, no, I would say it's better described here. It was just more of a summary on. Oh, here we go. Uh, but I believe four only had the long tooth and razor claw. I think the others are new. That's a bit more information about them here. About your psych um, psychology and culture and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, shifters, also sometimes called the wear touched, a race of humanoids, fierce and wild spirited shifters appear by many, as much as their shape shifting brethren. This cool little photo there of that. Show everyone at home. That's the cool. Forgotten Realms wiki. And the Forgotten Realms is, is the universe that, that fade on the continent you're on, and then Sword Coast is in. So if you're ever that, looking up anything. There's actually more shifters here. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, there's some extra stuff. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately we, we can only go the ones that, that uh, wizards have, have created for us, so that's your options there. Beast Tide, Cliff Walk, Lawn Stride, Long Tooth, Razor Claw and Wild Hunt. So what... It's really annoying that they don't each have... I thought they'd each have like uh, animals associated with them. Yeah. Let me see if that exists somewhere. Um, because that's quite a surprise. You would you would have thought each one uh, would have a description. Yeah. Like, but no, I can't. I can't find anything. I haven't let Google go, and I can't can't find anything. Sorry. Right, anyway. So, what yep. one of those are you, are you thinking of anyway? Um. Hmm. As I said, it's either going to be the long tooth, the razor claw. Um, the dexterity boost would get you would, up to 18 which is good yeah, which, yeah it was good um, or the boost on the strength would get me up to 14 which is also good in terms of strength it's just between 
do I want to bite or do I want to unarm? So that's yeah. like when you when you'd attack. So you're gonna get. So let's see. Just for for how how it works to weapon fighting is that you actually use. So you get one bonus action each round. Yeah. Um, and normally it's not used for anything unless things specify it. But with two wheel dual wielding, if you want to dual wield, that will take a bonus action. Uh, to attack with your first weapon is your normal action, and then you use your um, bonus action to you attack with your second weapon. So okay. it wouldn't be advisable then to have something another bonus action is relying on. If you get what I'm saying there. Hold on, let me just. I'll just see if I can find where it specifies that. Um, do 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 do. But yeah, so that's maybe you should be looking at some of the things that don't give you attack abilities just because of you're already going to have to, or maybe you maybe you won't dual wield. It's entirely up to you. Yeah. Mm, you could, you could... Like I definitely want to keep the dual wield. Mm -hmm. um, um, the shifting feature that is a a bonus action, yeah. Yeah. So you you bonus action shift and you become this creature. Um, I think it says on your turn you can shift as a bonus action. Um, so on your first turn you wouldn't be able to use um, a lot of the abilities that give you bonus actions to use. Um, and then do, 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 the second turn you would you would be able to, to make use of, of a bonus action again. So just... Cool. Yeah, so... I mean, but, but you're going to... Because, for example, it's very unlikely you're going to be faced you're going to be two-handed immediately because you have to get up close yeah. to an enemy and to close that distance is going to take more than one turn, likely. Separate turn to attack dual wield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you you, you 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 start a fight, maybe you're you're 50 feet away from each other, you're not going to be able to, uh, cool. to hit each other um, until a turn later. I think Longtooth actually might work out then if I need to close and then attack so long to increase your strength score by one while shifting you can make a bite act attack as an action this is a melee attack weapon that uses strength for its attack roll and damage bonus um, if this attack hits and your target is your size or smaller you also grappled um, oh my god now the grapple rules are really really fun um, <laughs> I say in the in the way yeah. that <laughs> they're not fun at all but um, what it does basically is it reduces their speed to zero and they cannot and they have to ungrapple to get out of it, and they have to use their action to to try and ungrapple with you. It's pretty much grappling rules is, is the height of complexity in this edition. It's still very simple. Um, let's see, grappling a grapple creature can use its action to escape. So yeah, it's basically good. it can't do anything but escape, or it can just keep attacking you. Um, yeah. So if it, if it's so it's, it's not the only good thing about grappling someone is that they can't get away because they can still hit you just as well. Yeah. It's not like um, just to let you know. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. So you want to go with that then? Long well, I figure if I can close the distance. I'll just tell you what long stride is. By the way, long the dash action that lets yeah. you move another speed. So. So speed is 30, uh, which each square is usually 5 feet, so that's about 6 squares, 30 feet. If you use a dash action, so normally you give up your main attack for that, uh, it means you can move double. Um, and if you have dash as a bonus action, you could move 90 feet in a turn if you were long striding, for example. Yeah, go for long stride, actually, yeah. So that means you'd, you'd be able to basically... Especially as a ranger, if you're deciding to use your bow, which you 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 will have a ranged weapon, you're gonna be able to move around the battlefield with pretty much ease. Because no no matter what you do, you'll be able to move sixty feet in a turn, where everyone else is moving thirty. This is a, a very very strong ability. But I still um, have the option of dual wield. Yeah, you you dual you can yeah, and then you when you close in, you'll be able to dual wield. And when you're in close, you're not wanting to use a 
bonus action to use your movement anyway because you're wanting to stay there and fight them so that's yeah. very that it works it works good i think um so what kind of animal then granted you this what wear? there's pretty much every single wear animal in D. &D. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and what, what kind what are you thinking there for that Zagans. And then make sure to boost up your, your dex. I'll do that for you while you're looking up. Boost your dexterity becomes 18, and then I'll put in the fact that your shifting feature is you can use dash action as a bonus action. Um, and then you have to rest between it. Um, the word creature doesn't really have any other considerable thing to it does it no 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 this is entirely flavor it's up up to you like what kind of so obviously because you're descended from you know you've just got this blood and it just happened that all of the 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 abilities of you know maybe a werewolf was a werewolf all of the abilities you've inherited their their fleet movement and their quick yeah. speed uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a werewolf it can be really whatever you want a werebear a weregoat <laughs> apparently <laughs> Um, actually. Oh, there oh, they are. Wow. They're there. They're there at the bottom. If you see in the shifter page in the Forgotten Realms link, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's a list of them. There's were bats, were bears, were boars, were cats, were crocodiles, <laughs> were rats, were foxes, were serpents, were sharks, were tigers, were wolves, were spiders, and wolf were. What's a wolf were? <laughs> Wolf wear. A wolf wear oh. is the opposite of a. It's the offspring of werewolves and wolves. So the opposite of a shifter. Um. Curious. Oh, this is a good choice, actually. It's a lot. Yeah, interesting. And then we can. Uh, is that was that your father, your mother? Who who you know what what was this? How did? Right. How far back was this in your your family lineage? Or maybe. I Yep, go ahead. With a little bit of a stretch. Basically, if you look down at related races, mm -hmm. there's Lithat, which is like an elf wolves. <laughs> oh my so, goodness. Oh, so they are, yeah. So would that be possible to be your mother? Yeah, sure, if you want, yeah. Yeah, go for that. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I thirty changed curious yeah oh my good uh, look at their original name lied to okay yeah. so your mother was was basically an elf um did you know about this did your did your family know about this ability she had to, to... i was no. we Sorry? just assumed an elf you just assumed she was a normal elf okay and what about your father was your father an elf um or a human? no i was a human okay Cool. It's a really weird lineage. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so elves in this, I don't know if you know much about elves. Um, elves generally live for like 700 years or something like that. Um, and any elf you meet who's out in the world who's an adult would be at least 100. It doesn't make... There's still elf in human relationships, just to let you know. Um, and that's why they're, they're so rare. And humans yeah. are obviously pretty standard, live to 100 regular stuff. Uh, certainly... As a, a shifter, you can you can have inherited some of your your mother's um, longevity as well, because um, you're pretty much you're pretty much a mix of, of so many so many races here already. Uh, quite a mongrel you've created. Yeah, um, probably. So you can you can you know feel free to choose out of uh, the elf like on the on the player's handbook. If you go to races, um, they've got like descriptions and they've got naming conventions and appearance stuff like that and feel free to choose and there's half elf as well you want me might want to take a look at feel free to to think about how your appearance is in, in that kind of way um and where you came from where did you go so on the background page um your gender what do we think male or female male okay so stick that in um as i said half elves are usually more like humans and that um, their age, they become uh, adults at twenty-ish, um, as as with humans. 
Um, but they tend to have a much longer lifespan, living up to 200-ish years. Not as long as real elves, but certainly benefiting. So that's what I kind of imagine you'd be. Um, so what kind of age are you thinking? Oh. Are, you, are you quite young? Are you quite old? I would say I'm, I'm aged, but before a midlife crisis. Okay. So, 30, so, 40? I would say... 38, 39. 39. Okay. And what about your height? So, elves are notably... I mean, they're kind of the same size as humans, but elves are, are, are shorter than humans. Half elves, you can, you can... You can be the same range as a human and an elf, basically. It's up to you. Um, anywhere from five feet to above six feet. Six four. And you Same can you, you can roll for it as well if you'd like. There's the options to roll for it, um, or you can just choose six four while you're tall. Yeah, I would go six four. Okay, I sure. Mean, that's cool. Yeah. And then uh, are you going to say same weight as you as well? <laughs> Ten pounds, by the way, is how the weight works. Oh, um, I'm quite a light guy, so I don't know if that would fit the role. Feel free to add. So, half elves are s standard 110 pounds they start with, but they start at 49, the way it works in the thing. Um, so I don't know what they'd be without the, doing the rolling thing. I guess that would be... If you roll if you roll 2d4... 2d4? Yeah, like, to get your weight, there's actually, like, a formula to, to get the weight. Um, so let's see, hold on. So 6 foot 4... Minus four foot nine. I fucking hate feet. It's one <laughs> foot seven. It's nineteen inches. So nineteen times three is fifty seven. So you're only a hundred and sixty seven pounds. Um, yeah. So it went, it's not too surprising for elves to be light, but it's up to you. How many? One hundred seventy. How much is that in stone? That is 11 stone, or almost 12 stone. Cool. I'd be surprised if you are lighter than that. Are you lighter than that? I'm actually 11 and a half, so... Wow. Halfway. That's pretty light. Yeah. You're almost as, as light as me. I'm like a <laughs> feather. Well, um, you're actually... You're, you're heavy. No. Do I say you're almost as light as me? Yeah. That's what I was like. Yeah. I would say... Wait, then. Average, I would say, for just like an average build, so... You could do the BMI shit if you wanted. I I would aim for thirteen stone. Thirteen stone. Okay, well, go ahead and, and put that in. Thirteen stone is what one hundred. I don't know, one hundred sixty-nine pounds. Yeah. So it's in pounds, mm -hmm. so one hundred sixty-nine. Yeah, we'll do that. One hundred sixty-nine pounds doesn't have to be accurate. No. Yes, we're obviously not going to track. Re the only time it really comes up is when you're unconscious and someone has to try and drag you to safety. And then that's when the weight rules matter. Did you die? You're frozen. Rip. Did I die? Is it me who's gone? Sorry about that, everyone. It's just, I'll just message him on Facebook and see if he's about. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing. This is quite fun. He actually knows some stuff. Well, quite pleased about that. Lots of people watching this today. No, he's, he's rejoined. Maybe just. Hey. Did you, did you close the tab accidentally? No, um, it was all there. I think it just disconnected to my Wi-Fi. Oh, I see. Okay. I'll probably just get a wire out next time we're on. Yeah. The what I was saying was that the only time we ever comes up is when you're unconscious and you're being dragged to safety by someone. Now it's like, yeah. okay, how heavy is he? How can they actually carry him? That's the only time it ever comes up. So you don't really want weight to come up. What about your eyes and, and hair then? Obviously, you've got a big variety and because there's a, a variety in elves themselves and then there's yeah. a large variety in humans. So you've pretty much... And then there's a large variety in half-elves as well. So you've pretty much got whatever you'd like there uh, for, for your appearance. Um, you know, you've got elves of blue skin. You've got elves that are, that are golden-coloured, different all sorts... 
I would say tanned. So tanned. All of them. Okay. Um, so there is there is ethnicities in the uh, um, the human PDF page, and I think it's all of skin. The people are Luskins, I think it is. Let me just look on roll twenty on Forgotten Realms because there's people that are around here. Around this area, are you from this area? Terithian, so you're a Terithian then. Terithians are olive to light skinned with brown or blonde hair. They look. So that was your father. Your father was from this area, yeah? Yeah, I would assume so. Cool. So go ahead and, and include that you know the language Shondathan then. Uh, how do you. Shondath? Shondathan. C H O N and D A T H A N. T-H-A-M-T-H Sean Dathan Sean Dathan Let's see um, I'll just fix that da uh -huh. Sean Dathan There you go um, And size is medium Yeah And your alignment Now I imagine you know you've heard of alignments before There's a good little summary on the character creation handout as well, I think. Is there? No. Okay, there's not. Um, I thought I'd paste that in there. Apparently didn't. Um, let me just get it for you then. What are you thinking straight away? You think you're going to be a good, morally good character? Are you going to be an evil, selfish person? Are you just going to be a selfish? What are you thinking? I'd imagine it'd be the equivalent of Han Solo. <laughs> okay. So, kind of chaotic neutral, maybe chaotic good on a good day. Um, so the way it works, I'll just I'll just read out the nine to you. There's there's nine. It's it's like an axis. So I'm sure you've seen it before if you've been on the internet. There's a lawful to chaotic, and then there's good to evil. And you've seen it like all the different Batman's lawful neutral, blah blah blah, stuff like that. So yeah. lawful good creatures can be counted on to do the right thing as expected by society. Gold dragons, paladins, and most dwarfs are lawful good. Neutral good folk do the best they can to help others according to their needs. Many celestials, some cloud giants, and most gnomes are neutral good. Chaotic good creatures act as their conscience directs, with little regard for what others expect. Copper dragons, many elves, and unicorns are chaotic good. Lawful neutral individuals act in accordance with law, tradition, or personal codes. Many monks and some wizards are lawful neutral. Neutral is alignment of those who prefer to steer clear of moral questions and don't take sides, doing what seems best at the time. Lizard folk, most druids and many humans are neutral. Chaotic neutral creatures follow their whims, holding personal freedom above all else. Many barbarians, rogues and some bards are chaotic neutral. And then you've got the evil stuff. Lawful evil creatures methodically take what they want within the limits of a code of tradition, loyalty or order. Devils, blue dragons and hobgoblins are lawful evil. Neutral evil is alignment of those who do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. Many drought, some cloud giants and yugolos are neutral evil. And finally, chaotic evil, the absolute crazy psychopaths of the realm, who clearly Natalie was last time, if you heard about that. Hey, chaotic evil creatures act with arbitrary violence spurred by their greed, hatred or bloodlust. Demons, red dragons and orcs are chaotic evil. Um, I think I might go for chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral, cool. So go ahead and stick that in. That's again, creatures follow their whims, holding personal freedom above all else. Certainly fits with a ranger. And one of the things rangers don't always fall in the alignment of good is because, depending on your type of ranger, they're not a fan of cities and stuff. It depends. Yeah. Like they, they think civilization's bad, um, but it depends. Cool. Um, oh, I need to do my race actually. Sorry. Yeah, up the top, a uh, racing class up there. You got a ranger in. I'll put shifter and I'll put the, uh, what was it, the long bash? Um, it was long straight. Yeah, yeah just shifter, long straight, brackets or whatever, yeah. And class ranger. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, names, there's a whole bunch of names and the the human names and elf names and the PDF um, and yeah. on the the flow chart as well I think uh, flow chart nope 
Never mind. Oh, the flowchart has the fucking the alignments. I knew I had them somewhere. Should have. Should have just instead of to read it out. Yeah. Pure voice. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you can think of your name as we go on. So now we'll do your your class stuff. So as a ranger. Um, so you want to go into your course stats here. Um, do, 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 do course stats. Yep. You have saving throw proficiency and strength and dexterity. So there's a little saving proficiency column beside your modifier and just tick and strength and dex. And what that means is you apply your proficiency bonus and your proficiency bonus at level one is plus two and it's how good you are at stuff you're good with is the yep. best way of describing it, I suppose. Um, it just means if I ever say you're being pushed by someone, make a strength saving throw, you'll be better at that. Um, and all you have to do is press the save button anyway, everything's all automatic. You don't have to manually roll any dice. Um, and I would, what I'd say is I'd say, a, I'd say a DC for that, so say 15 is quite hard to get, so I'd say 15, and then you would have to beat 15 to succeed. Yeah. Okay, and um, we'll go to the skills page. Um, now again, you can roll pretty much all skills um, whenever you want, but these are just ones you're better at than other stuff. And you can choose three from Animal Handling, Athletics, Insight, Investigation, Nature, Perception, Stealth and Survival. All you do is you click the drop down menu and change no to yes. Cool. Um, On the ones that you are. What are you thinking? Sleight of Hand, what would that consist of? Uh, so sleight of hand's not an option you have to to choose from this. You can get it from your background later on, uh, right. but it's not something that you can from this. So as so you see, I, I've got to choose three from this group. But what sleight of hand is is basically hiding stuff, picking pockets. Um, maybe if you're if you're looting people's corpses and you wanted to uh, to make no one notice, slipping a few extra grand. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so what ones are you thinking out of those those three there? Um, two seconds. Animal handling, athletics, insight, investigation, nature, perception, stealth, and survival. Good point. Um, acrobatics. Not as again. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. The options. <laughs> The options again. Um, it's in the chat. You can't see it? Oh, uh, sorry, I wasn't on the chat there. Yeah, I've got them here. Um, perception, I think, definitely. Perception is a very good one to have. And you'll see that the booster passive perception as well. Passive perception, one of the most important uh, things. It's in fact so important that on your little token, you can have three numbers, and the three numbers that's going to be there is um, your HP. Which is how much health you've got. Your AC, which is how difficult you are to hit with a weapon or an attack, and then passive perception. <laughs> That's how important it is. It's one of the you won't you won't ever look at it and care about it, but I'll be looking at it all the time to see if you spot the trap that you're walking over. Cool. Um so do I You just change I the no to yes. Click on the no and click yes instead. Um insight and investigation. What would they consider? Uh, Insight is telling if someone's lying to you, pretty much. Investigation is different from perception in that it's more of a study of stuff. And there's like a good... Just let me go into the skills. There's a good um, way of putting it, but they're very similar nonetheless. It's like the worst... Like they've been in every edition and they've never managed to clarify too good. But investigation... Perception's what your common sense street street awareness is kinda um, your 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 ability to be just generally aware in investigations if you're actively looking into something you're more likely to be using investigation cool um, well, I think but you do a... survival for tracking animals not investigation yeah. I just... think I'm going to do survival one because of the ranger mm -hmm. I think I'll definitely want that Cool. Um, and the last one would either be investigation or insight and I think investigation cool. we call it perception is the noticing things from the eyes and investigation is looking through things mm -hmm. yeah it's understanding stuff with your, your brain kinda um, where's the fucking I was trying to look for the 
this other as using scale scores. Um, so I think I think I'm, I'll do yeah, but the thing is, that obviously my investigation is one, my insight two. Mm -hmm. So when you you've seen when you make them yes, it boosts up by plus two. Investigation when you look around for clues and make deductions based on those clues, you make a, an investigation check. You might deduce the location of a hidden object, discern from the appearance of a wound what kind of weapon dealt it, or determine the weakest point in the tunnel that could cause it to collapse. Pouring through ancient scrolls in search of a hidden fragment of knowledge might also call for investigation check, um, and then compared to perception, lets you spot, hear or otherwise detect the presence of something, your general awareness of your surroundings and the keenness of your senses. Cool. Um, and insight. Insight. Um, I checks. I had to go to that, I've got 14. Yeah, exactly. So it'd, it'd be plus 4 you'd be rolling most of the time, because passive, passive skills are when it's 10 plus your modifier, and they're... Yeah really only relevant in regards to perception you don't normally use your passive stuff for everything else because yeah. most of the time it's active rather than passive um, and most of the stuff like for example insight i'd ask you for an insight role against their charisma if it's a player for example they might want to be trying to lie to you so they'd use deception um, or if it's like a monster they'd use their charisma modifier instead yeah to get a dc based on their how difficult they are. I think I'll just go for investigation. Cool. It's more broader, as I said, that means I've got the general awareness of my my uh, surroundings, and if need be, I can investigate. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see. And as I said, you can use any, all things anyway. Um, so I should boost up to to plus three there, um, which is good. Wait, what? Oh shit, I forgot, yeah. So, <laughs> I was wondering why it wasn't boosting it. Uh, in class, you want to place one level in Ranger. And then yes. you'll see your skills has been properly... Uh, if you go back to your skills page. My bad there, now they're all actually boosting. So now you can see the, the benefit of, of the proficiency bonus. Cannot believe I forgot about that. Okay, so now we'll go into your background page and scroll down to the bottom. Um, the tool proficiencies, equipment proficiencies with armor is light armor, medium armor, and shields. Weapons are simple and martial weapons. Yep. And no tool proficiencies. I like how you mixed up the 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 boxes there. Your weapon proficiencies are light weapons, oh, yeah. medium weapons. <laughs> Not the Mars. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay, that um, so now we'll do your hit points for a ranger. Your hit points every time you level up, you get a D10 worth of hit points, so it can vary obviously. At level one, you get maximum, which is 10, and then you add your Constitution modifier to it. Um, so I think your con modifier is one, I think. Is that right? Go back into your core stats. Uh, yeah, plus yeah. one. So that would mean you'd have 11 HP at level one. However, because I'm so generous and such a nice DM and everyone was dying, um, you get to have level two HP at level one. So go ahead and roll your D10 plus one and pray you get something big. Otherwise, you'll be squishy. Not two seconds. And you'll uh, add this to 11. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's red by the way that means you've got the lowest possible number you could have got so your HP is 13 max 13 cunning that's that's the worst poor poor you poor James it really are oh. so squishy and there's actually I think someone's got less HP than you so do, but they're oh, they only have D6s and they have like right. 11 HP. So, you, like, a Barbarian is D12, so you can see how that means they'd be, on average, more likely to have a lot more HP. Um, so, and also, you have see down there under your hit dice, bump that up to 2 current, instead of it just being 0. It should just um, below a HP. HP, sorry. Um, where is it? Uh, below HP, below an... Do you not see HP? 
Uh, I've got hit points and speed. Yeah, and then below that, it's initiative. Below that, leveling experience. Below that, hit dice. Hit dice. Yeah, I've got hit dice. Sorry. And you want to bump so. that up to two in current. In current. Oh, on each of them. Just for ranger. Oh, just for ranger. Yes. Because that's two d tens, and that's how you regain HP hey, when you're resting. Yeah, that's. Look at that. You rolled maximum. If it's green, it's maximum. If only you'd roll that for your uh, HP, <laughs> eh? Then you could have had 22, but nope, you've got... So you filled so that in there, you've got your max and current HP is 13. Yeah. 13 for both. Oh, 13 for both. Yeah. Awesome. 11 plus, plus the two-year-old for second level. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Um, now we'll go to your inventory page. Yep. And you can choose scale mail or leather armor. So scale mail is heavier and leather is lighter. Um, if you're weighed down by heavier armor, you can't dodge as well with your dexterity. Uh, I'm going to take the leather then. Okay, so just go ahead and put that in there. I'll go through it all and sort the weights and stuff. Because I'm such an SDM. You get two short swords or two simple melee weapons. Short swords are akin to daggers, then, I believe, are faster DPS. Uh, short swords are better than, than daggers, uh, quite significantly. I don't, on the PDF page, it's a Chapter 5's equipment. Um, daggers are D3? Oh, I don't know, I have to have a look. Daggers are oh, D4, and short swords are D6. I'll take the short swords. Okay, so just put short swords to bump up the quantity to two, um, and I'll go through and add those weapons. We'll we'll get to roll manually when we do the fight at the end of this as well. Okay, let's go back up to ranger, and then you get a dungeoneer's pack or an explorer's pack. Um, the difference in those being so. One is more suited for dungeon eating, you get things like pittons and stuff, and the other is more suitable for exploring, so you get bedrolls, um, things that would help you in the wilderness, like fire stars and stuff. Explorer pack then. Okay, cool. Um, and last but not least, a longbow and a quiver of 20 arrows. Awesome. Separate items. Uh, yeah. Do, do longbow and then arrow and then bump up to 20. There we go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. As a ranger, um, you get a favoured enemy, and this will tie into your backstory. Choose beginning at first level, you have a significant experience studying, tracking, hunting, and even talking to a certain type of enemy. Choose a type of favoured enemy, and the choices you have are aberrations, beasts, Hello? aberrations, beasts, uh, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, Phase, fiends, giant, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. Alternatively, you can select two races of humanoids such as gnolls, orcs, and favoured enemies. Um, well, we're going to be in a mine, aren't we? <laughs> well, potentially. Yeah. Um. Don't make a game it. Tut tut tut. Tut tut tut. You get uh, more favoured enemies as you level up, anyway. Well, I'm quite an elusive character, so I think that I, I have the feeling that I want to do something elusive. And I would say dragons. Okay. Between, like, goblins. So, I, if you choose, yeah, it's, with goblins you would choose another race as well. There would be the two races of humanoid you could choose, goblin and something else. Um, what you get for it is advantage on at, at, at this level. What you get is advantage in wisdom survival checks, um, and you can learn their language, uh, one one language of your choice, as well as advantage on in intelligent checks. Advantage means you roll two d twenties and you choose the better of them. You notice in a lot of your rolls, is it automatically does two of them. Um, Dragon's I, I quite cool. Yeah, um, I'm tempted for the dragon, but I think 
probably with the amount of goblins and you know I mean just the amount in the lands mm -hmm. that I probably more akin to knowing a lot more about them and something else. That's certainly yeah, it could be the case, yeah. Up to you entirely. Um uh, I mean like Like I what what are you kinda of thinking of your backstory then? Um you're rare think if you're if you're doing dragon like let's have let's split your character backstory in two. What would you be doing if you were you were hunting dragons or tracking dragons, talking to dragons? There are good dragons, remember, in the world. Um and then um, what would you be doing if you were maybe hated goblins? What 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 happened there? Stuff like that. Fine. Um I would say with the dragons you have the understanding that they're not all the same. Especially being a rager. And the fact is you reach an agreement with the, the negotiable dragons, I would say, in terms of I respect your boundary, respect mine. Mm -hmm. That's way. definitely, uh, dragons are definitely a, a very... You, you, <laughs> if you're ever talking face-to-face -face with a dragon, though, a lot of the time you'd be more worried <laughs> yeah. compared to because even even without them wanting to kill you, uh, dragons are very intelligent creatures, certainly. Yeah. Um. So I would say at the end of the day, being a ranger, I'm more likely to have actually had experience with the dragon before. Mm -hmm. Certainly. So I I would actually go with the dragons because the more I talk about it, the more that mm -hmm. I'm feeling very cool. good point. Okay. Well, I'll just put that in there. So. All this at the moment is, and for level one, is you have advantage on wisdom survival checks to track them. Um, so if you're ever tracking a dragon, of course, at level one, you don't want to be facing a dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not in a fight, certainly. Um, dragons, it's in the name. They're they're one of the the harder. Right? Of course, uh, the 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 way it works in this system is is there's ages. So a young dragon, easy. And then you get the ancient dragons that are bigger and huger. Um, and you also gain Draconic, which is the language dragons speak. So go ahead and go in your background and add that in there. Quite a multilingual fellow. Yeah, as I said, I think I'm quite the unique specimen. Yeah, Sylvian, by the way, is like fairy language. I didn't mention that before. Uh, draconic. Yeah. Uh, I believe that's it. Okay, and you get to choose a favoured environment. Uh, you're particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and are adept at travelling and surviving in such regions. Choose one type of favoured terrain, arctic, coast, desert, forest, grassland, mountain, swamp or the underdark. Um, I would say the, the underdark would be mines and subterranean environment. Yeah. The underdark is a particular place in the, like, the entire world underneath is filled with um you're just mines because of the title there's no <laughs> dragons in mines no but i was just thinking like well, obviously with the, the dragon background there's no dragons, dragons in mines oh, that's suspicious isn't it who's that on the uh, front cover <laughs> I, you know, I mean with the dragons you've got you've got the, obviously spoken to them to be familiar mm -hmm. with them a degree, so I'd imagine that the Underdark's probably a prime ground for dragons over the rest of the environments. Compared, I would, I the Underdark is 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 no, no, not that's right. not what the, the Underdark is. It's more like a city, a warren of tiny, small tunnels that's filled with dark, like evil dwarfs, evil elves, evil, oh, evil everything. There is. I'm sure there is, like, yeah, pretty much. It's like, if there's a race above ground, then what they've done is they've invented an evil version of the below ground. Um, like, there's evil no gnomes, like gnomes of all things. Um, the, let's see. Thunderdark is a vast subterranean network of interconnected caverns and tunnels stretching beneath entire continents and forming an underworld. And they, like, they don't speak common, they speak undercommon, and stuff like that. Um, cool. um I would say woods then. Okay, cool. So what you get as a... Let's see, what you get doo -doo -doo, as a ranger, got so many tabs open, as you get doo -doo -doo, wisdom, you, your proficiency bonus is doubled whenever you make something related to your favourite terrain. So for example, if you were making a, a check to see if you remembered a type of herb or something, a wisdom check or intelligence check, if you're looking at that uh, you'd 
double your proficiency bonus so you get an extra plus to at this level and a whole bunch of boring stuff about traveling um, difficult terrain doesn't slow you don't become lost um, you get more food things like that um, and you also when tracking other creatures you learn their size their exact number uh, which is quite good awesome and you've got to paste it all that in there and let's just at the top put um, woods, 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 woods. And this area, Neverwinter, you see Neverwinter Forest, big area there. Certainly if you grew up around Neverwinter, it could be a place you were there. And that's all you get. You don't get to choose your dual wielding. I mean, you can still dual wield, but you don't get to choose the, the two weapon fighting until second level um, and then we choose your background now so there's on the character creation flowchart on the character creation uh, handout there um, if you go on the right there's a list of them all and I'll also do more but it's not worth looking at the other ones at the moment creation flowchart two seconds mm. yep and you can see there A noble soldier on the far right, yeah? Um designs. The big huge blue block. The one that's highly thin right. blue. Yeah, uh, I see all the classes. Kind of, yeah, on uh, the classes, keep going right from the classes after tiefling and, and races. You do a yeah. top right hand side of the flow chart. Make in sure the you blue block. and the big huge blue it's like all of it is put in the blue, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, soldier, yeah. I see soldier yeah, that's it. So the ones that are um, not there are in the PDF, like the ones that are read out. But you can read the title, read the first sentence. So you've got noble soldier, acolyte, criminal, sage, folk hero. What What are you thinking then out of out of these eighteen choices you've got? Um, a hermit, an outlander. What did you do? What was your life? This is before you, you came and, and took up this mission or whatever you did. Um, I'd imagine an outlander, just because of the unique character. Okay, so an outlander, let's see. Backgrounds is chapter 4. Um, an outlander is... You grew up in the wilds, far from civilization and the comforts of town and technology. You've witnessed the migration of herds larger than forests, survived weather more extreme than any city dweller could comprehend, and enjoyed the solitude of being the only thinking creature for miles in any direction. The wilds are in your blood, whether you are a nomad, an explorer, a recluse, a hunter-gatherer, or even a marauder. Even in places where you don't know the specific features of terrain, that you know the ways of the wild. Cool. That sounds like something that would fit you then. That's what you've been doing for the last 20 years, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Out wandering the woods. Yeah, I would go for that. Yep, going to cool. wee stroll. Cool, okay. So skill proficiencies you get are athletics and survival. Um, you've already chosen survival for one, so basically it means you get free skill proficiency in whatever you'd like. All oh, right, cool. Um, so you get athletics. So protect that. Make that as yes, yep. and then anything else you'd like. Um, ooh, good question. Medicine. Medicine. Medicine yeah. you use often if if people are dying. Yeah. You can. Or, oh, got so many good choices. Remember, you can roll them all. All this does is make it make you better at it. So I, I would go with medicine. Cool. So obviously, if you're out by yourself, you've got to know something. Yeah, know the herbs that that the best treat, know how to stem wounds and stuff like that. Cool. Yeah. And background at the very bottom, your two proficiencies as one type of musical instrument. Uh, there is a list of them, or you can just choose any musical instrument um, you'd like, like a lute bagpipes that's actually one of the options yeah i think we have a bag we have we have a second bagpipe player fantastic um yeah let's go for it 
Cool. So I'll put that in tool proficiencies, and you also get one language of your choice. Now, um, what would make sense? I would assume Elvish because your mother was Elvish. Yeah. She may have taught you Elvish. That would make sense to me. You have five languages. That's a lot. Oh, I'm you. gonna, I'm gonna be the tour guide for these people. Um, three. I'm just looking at the other people's. Three, two. Three, three, yeah, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> and you didn't even go there, yeah, like if you went accolade, you get two. Um, let's see, uh, background, 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 and more equipment. So you get a quarter staff, that's an inventory. Yep, uh, one quarter staff, a hunting trap. Um, two seconds. Uh, hunting trap. That's one. Yep. It's really heavy. Yeah. A set of traveller's clothes. So traveller's clothes. Oh. Oh, sorry. There. A belt pouch containing ten gold pieces. So you just put belt pouch down there and then up the top is a coin carried place to put the gold. Um yeah. Coin carried gold pieces, GP. Yeah, ten. Ten. So once I do this job, I'm, I'll be at twenty then. You'll be at twenty, yeah. Assuming, oh, well, it wouldn't it won't cost you anything because you, you'll see in a moment you don't have to pay to live because your 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 feature, which is oh, b before we move on, a trophy from an animal you killed. So this is something you've you've carried with you. Um, because of your what you've chosen, it doesn't have to necessarily be an animal you personally kill, but certainly a trophy of an animal they've kept. So if you want to have like a dragon tooth or something, that's cool too. Yeah. You're so gonna go with a dragon trophy. tooth. There we go. Um. Okay. Where'd you get that? I am. Um, when I discovered that you can't reason with all dragons. So, did you, you escape from a dragon? Is that what you're... The first one that I had to take down. So you've actually killed a dragon before? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. And how did you... How did you was this like a baby dragon? Because remember, dragons... A young one at that, a young yeah. Young one, okay. And were you... Did you have help? Or was it just yourself? Yeah, I had help. You had help. So to the, the group of you guys, you'd, you'd went in part... Maybe part of... Was it part of a team? What, what was the... What, so... There's different types of dragons. Um, there's good guys, which are called uh, fuck um, shit. <laughs> chromatic, <laughs> yeah, chromatic and metallic. Good guys are metallic dragons, so gold, silver, bronze, copper. Uh, I think that's and gold. So yeah, I think that's it. And then bad guys are chromatic ones, so red, black, blue, green, white. Um, and what they breathe is different. So red dragons breathe fire, blue dragons breathe electricity, green dragons breathe poison, um, white dragons breathe cold. Mm. So what kind of baby dragon was it? Why were you guys attacking it? Or did what did you try to reason with it first? Tell me a little bit about this in your life. The innocent creature that I murdered. <laughs> it wasn't innocent. Um... Pretty much, it was giving a local village some trouble, so we decided to put it down after trying to negotiate or reach an understanding with it. So, okay, so what I'm thinking here is then this is this is what you do. This is what you've done for say the past twenty or so years. You 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 hear about dragon troubles. You go there. Uh, you know you're not. No one's capable of taking a dragon on by themselves. Yeah. So you you group up. You speak to the village. You say, look, guys. I've dealt with dragons before, this is my job. I go around and I save villages from dragons. And then this was your this was your first job, this was your first introduction. You'd went and you thought, guys just asked the dragon to leave. Um which hadn't hadn't gone down as you'd hoped. You yeah. barely survived and you've kept this. Maybe this tooth actually was you've also got a scar from where this yeah. tooth was was bit. Well, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, that sounds pretty often. So there's an origin here. Um, I'm not sure what would be best. You can roll a d10, but basically, it's for a uh, origin. You've 
You can roll in the following table to determine your occupation during your time in the wild or choose one that best fits your character. And I think we're going for like um, Dragon Hunter, I suppose, is the best. But just to, to tell you the ones that are here is Forester, Trapper, Homesteader, Guide, Exile or Outcast, Bounty Hunter, Pilgrim, Tribal Nomad, Hunter Gatherer or Tribal Marauder. Um, but I think we've we've already got, I don't think we need to choose that. We've kind of got you what you did. Um and as a background feature, you have Wanderer, which means you have an excellent memory for maps and geography. You can always recall the general layout of terrain, settlements and other features around you. In addition, you never starve. You can find food and fresh water, basically, for up to five yeah. people each day, provided you're not in the middle of a desert. <laughs> Suggested characteristics. Often considered rude and uncouth among civilised folk, outlanders of little respect for the niceties of life in the city. The ties of tribe, clan, family and the natural world of which they are part of are the most important bonds to most outlanders. Again, most, so it's always up to you. There are personality traits here. You can roll for it, um, or you can choose from them. Up to you entirely. Um... This is on page uh, 137 if you want to look up. Two seconds, I'll just get that. And basically, it's personality, ideal, bond, and flaw you have. Also, if you could roll me a D100 at the same time. Yeah. Um, D100. Yeah, D100. That's your trinket. Let's see, 71. So while you, you get into that page, I will find. So this is a, a trinket, it's just a little object you've picked up um, in your travels. Maybe not too sure where, or, or in this adds a little. So you've picked up, actually don't, we've already got this, so can you roll another D100? Um, yeah. Don't want two people to have the same one. <laughs> yeah. You can just press up, by the way, that goes to your last roll. Oh, yeah. 81. Oh. Yes, a better. purple handkerchief embroidered with the name of a powerful archmage. Oh wow! How curious. Where did you get that from? You can have Off the, a... uh, out of the dragon's lair. Oh, was it? Was the? Was the? The? Were they working? Do you, Do you know what was happening there? Were they working with the, the dragon uh, or? I just noticed it in the loot pile, and okay. it out because everything else is shiny and gold and metallic and eye catching. And why is this handkerchief just there? Who was there? Who put it there? There was no bodies. So why is it there? A very, that's a very um, good, cool. That's a little. What you're maybe you're not even sure about the name on it. Who that name belongs to? And you're you're, you're wondering. The curiosity kind mm -hmm. of thing. See if you if anyone if you ever hear the name, you know. Yeah. Okay. And are you on that page now, 137? Uh, 137, I am on, I see the, uh, the Outlander, yes. Yeah, Outlander, yeah. So you want to scroll down from Outlander, it's on the page after, it's on the left column, Personality Traits. Personality Traits. So you yes. can either roll 2d8, because you've got to choose 2, and it's just right. kind of to help you roleplay your character and things like that. Yeah, don't worry. Um, I'll just get on that in there. Or you so, can choose from it. Or you can roll and then be like, that doesn't fit. Right. Uh, I'll roll a d8, see what it is. Six. So six is... I'm always picking things up, absently fiddling with them, and sometimes accidentally breaking them. Well, I pick things up. That's why I got the hang. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, really. So it fits you well. Okay, cool. And I another one. You can break a handkerchief. That's very true. Um, another three. So three comes to. I once ran twenty-five miles without stopping to warn to my clan. Uh, without stopping to warn my clan of an approaching orc horde, I'd do it again if I had to. I think that's my spell, actually. Yeah, that is, yeah. I noticed that to my clan. Disappointing. I ran without stopping to warn my clan of an approaching arc horde. I'd do it again. Yes. Yeah, I, cool. I'm happy. It doesn't necessarily have to be an arc cord. If you, maybe it's a dragon, if you'd like. Maybe yeah. that was the the first yeah. time that you realised dragons were a danger to society. Was when yeah. you 
you you're at another village. Twenty five miles is, is enough distance for there to be another village. That's a day's journey. We we small farming town. You saw a dragon burning everyone, and you ran to your village to tell them. Oh. And I'm a long strider as well. And, so yeah, even yeah. even bear. That was why. It's all coming together. But yeah, no, that, I'm happy with that. Cool. Um. One th okay, and then we go do the rest of the stuff before I ask you about the rest. So ideal. Change, greater good, honour, might, nature, or glory, or you can roll for it. D6. Um, A lot of these, oftentimes, these ones are more important to choose because of it. Oh. I was a change. Change. So, kind of. So, like. Yep, for the people at home. Life is like the seasons and constant change, and we must change with it. Yes. So that's a bit, kind of your ideal. Your ideal is kind of, you know, just just what it says in the tin, really, an ideal. You know, it's your your motivation, your 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 goal, your... Hold on, where's the fucking... There's a good, good description of it. Where is it? <laughs> uh, it drives your character. Um... Your ideals are the things that you believe in most strongly, the fundamental moral and ethical principles that compel you to act as you do. Ideas encompass everything from your life goals to your core belief system. So that's in background there. Are you putting these in your personality traits and background into your background oh. page? Not done that yet, sorry. That's fine. Personality trait. Yeah, it's in, it's in yeah, just copy Sweet. paste in. Uh, Ten viewers this entire time. This is the most popular character creation video ever. <laughs> I'm just, I as I said, I got like a loose plan, and obviously with the RPG experience. No, must, so. no what it's got to be is it's the thumbnail, isn't it? It's your pretty face. It's driving them in. <laughs> must be it. Well, this is good. I mean, so come together. Yeah. So basically, I'll put the number. And the description and my personality traits. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's an hour 20. It's going to be clocking in the longest character creation video. Any. But this beginners. So there's, there's, ones, there's one for ideals and, and flaws and bonds. So bonds, a d6, sorry. What one What one are you rolling? Oh, did I? Oh, you haven't put your ideal in yet, have you? Ideal. I'll yeah, just I'll copy paste that. I'll copy paste that and you go ahead and, and roll for Outlander. Or you can choose again. So your bond is is, is kind of as many tie into the world. Yeah. What are you thinking? You want to roll mm. for it, D six. I would say three. Three. I can three. I, mean, I would go for a, a roll, but three just kind of rings out. I will bring terrible wrath down on evil doers who destroyed my homeland. Okay. So, where was your home? Was this your your family? Are they are you are they dead? The dragons kill them. Maybe the one you were running to warn them about. It wasn't enough. You did all you could. I I would say my first experience was obviously. I know we talked about the first experience of hunting, and taking it down, mm -hmm. but obviously from a young age, before I could fully comprehend what was happening, my family was taken away from me by a dragon. Okay, like mur murdered by taken yes. away. Yeah. Okay. So this was. Was this the one you ran? You so this is the one you saw when you were a kid. You were out in the next village. You know that I once ran twenty five miles. You ran. You told your 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 mother, and then your mother, being you know a powerful yeah. a powerful elf, you might not know about what she was, but she was a powerful. She you know she was more powerful than maybe the other people in your tribe, just as magically or something like that. She sent you off with a friend. You didn't know what was happening, um, and then yeah. you came back. And your the town was was ash. Yes, cool. uh, I'm happy. Sounds pretty good. Orphans, orphans galore. Yay! Well, you never know. Maybe your maybe your mother survived. Who knows? Yeah, I, I don't know to this day. As I said, it was just ash when I Came eventually back. got brought back. Great. But by that time, it had been a few weeks. Obviously, being a child and so this dragon have you, have you sorted it yet, or is this your your life goal is to is to find this dragon and bring it down for... Um, 
life goal to take it down, I would say. I would cool. say the ones I've tracked down and killed are associated mm-hmm. to the main. And you're, and you're maybe you're, you're practicing because this is an older dragon, a, a bigger dragon, yeah. the deadlier dragon. Great, cool, awesome. Um, and then flaw, finally, another another thing to role play a little bit. So in D six um, here, you can choose choose one of these. I'm gonna roll this, right? Because okay. a flaw is a flaw, you know. Yeah, yeah, true. You don't get to choose choose what you're bad at. Six. six. Don't expect me to save those who can't save themselves. It's nature's way that the strong survive and the weak perish. Are you happy with that? Yeah, I would say so. I know I was saying organized people go out and get the dragons, but at the end of the day, everyone's responsible for themselves. Mm-hmm. And and indeed, um, that you are you're the the weak are the ones who don't who who are faced against a dragon and who run and who don't organize themselves together to band up and become strong. Yeah. It's kind of your your. Hey, I like it. Um, Paste that. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, and then that is us done. Um, what I'd like you to do. Um, well, we're we're going to do a bit of combat first, but let me just get that. You'll play a fucking spider. Is what you'll play. <laughs> Let's see. A spider. Um. What I'd like you to do for next time. Oh my god, this fucking page. I'm going um, to add some notes in the bonds and I'll tape this up at some point. Mm-hmm. There's a bio and info up the top left. Yeah. Um, and that's I... what I'll show you. Like, I'll show you um, someone else's. See what they did. So you can see that there on screen there? Mm-hmm. That's kind of rough. This is, this is the better, the better of it. I'll show you, for example, what. Um, well, I won't show you for. No, I can't show you yet. But I'll sh- let's see if I can find the, the those. The rest of them didn't write that much because they're lazy. Um, I like like a couple of a couple of sentences, a paragraph. But this is kind of your my ideal. If I if I logged on and saw that, be like, yay! Oh my god, it's got bold and everything. <laughs> um, as I was when I saw that one there. That's my other, that's my veteran group, because this is my newbies, my newbies Dungeons and Dragons, they're my veterans, so I do expect a little bit more um, effort for those guys. So those guys are used to, to writing up backstories. Um, yeah, but just a really a rough summary of, of where you go and how you've come here. And the big question I have to ask you with is why, why are you doing this, this right now? Why are you... On for this is not you, as in you, James. Actually, in a name as well. Why is your your character doing this? Why is he needing the money for Gungeon? Why is he escorting this wagon? Is he heard? Maybe this. What you know? What what is it he's he's doing along here? Um. Oh, good point. Um. Does he think maybe having ties to Gundren? He's heard of Gundren before. He thinks Gundren can give him stronger crossbows, you know, have access to something like that. He just wants ties to Gundren himself to have more access to stuff. To Gundren fight. being recently developed with the main, I guess. Yes. Yeah, uh, well the main the main doesn't he hasn't the main the only reason you know about the main is in this. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. but basically what he's what he said to you is he's 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 found something big. Um you guys, you maybe heard if you'd lived around the city, you maybe heard a rumor of this, this mine. It was centuries, millennia ago. No one's ever found it. Um, but he's saying he's found something big. You know this guy is a trustworthy guy. Even even you as an outlander, you've heard about him in town before. Big good merchant. He's a, he's a good guy. Um, and he's, there's going to be more work to be found once once you get to his. Cool. Um. Well, I figure like it's time that I actually get out and stretch my legs past what I've been comfortable with in the familiar territory that I've kind of grown up and stayed in. Obviously, I've travelled from end to end, but I've never really aimed to get out further. And and perhaps something you're considering is that as 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 good as 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 rabbling together peasants and guards. And I mean, you've seen them around. Adventurers groups are the ones who make the most impact in the world. 
and and you know that this this kind of <laughs> quest is is a is a is a starter is a the exclamation mark above Gundren's head went. You know what? I'm going to join that just so maybe I can, you know, maybe I'll have access to some people who can lend their strength in yeah. slaying the dragon menace. What's down in this region? I haven't really checked it yet, so I need to check it out at some point. So mm-hmm. we'll kill two birds with one stone. Cool. Great. Um, okay, so let's do a bit of combat. Um, just to kind of give you a rough concept of it here. Uh, also, your name. Do you have a name yet? Or are you going to look oh, that up? You can. Absolutely. Good point. Um, I have a generator. <laughs> you have a, you have a gen- name generator. Fantastic. There are some yeah. uh, suggested names in the elf and the human bit as well, but sure, name generators are good. I mean, so. There's nothing really, you know what I mean, half L, shifter kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. That's true, yeah. It'll half be elf, elf or human stuff. And then a ranger. Your name will be a combination of being elven or human. There's Terethian names as well, if on the on the races page, which is what your your dad was. Um, yeah. So some example Terethi names are Anton, Dario, Marcon, Pieron, Romero, Salzar, Umbero, Feria, Spanish, olive oil, olive, olive skin. Sounds good. I mean, like, I'd imagine, I didn't know much, obviously, about my mom and dad. That's part of the, the mystery, you know? Mm-hmm. After I was like, past that point, that there, there's been nothing. So obviously, I would say I'm more probably likely to have something major from my mum's side of the name, because okay. that's the odd thing, is it's always the male to female. So why did my mum's name take such a precedence? I don't quite know her background. Remember, mm-hmm. I don't know that. She yeah, you don't know that she's this this creature, and your your mum is. I mean, certainly the, the the family you grew up, the the town you grew up in was mostly humans, so it was yeah. an oddity that your mother was there. Um, character profession is just random, pretty much. I would say. Um, what? I think character profession in this name generator. But yeah, you don't need to. Oh, that's like how it derives in your your name. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, cool. Um, Jamroar the Ranger. Jamroar. So, yeah. do you, do you not tell people your surname? Because I um, your surname is not the it's Ranger. Just Chorster. Hmm. Chorster. C H O R S T E R. Is that Elvish? I have no that idea. That doesn't sound Elvish. Yeah, so it's an example of Elvish names for you again. They're the big game. You want to look up like Faerun name generator. Um, Amakia, Amastasia, Galanodo, Homoleon, oh, I can't fucking Lyodon, Nahilio, Cyanodo, Sh- Shelloshient, Merlimine. They're meant to be soft, but I'm not pronouncing them soft. And Elfikir. Um, what was the name of that name generator you were saying? Faerun. 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 I'll see if I can find it for you. D and D character name generator. Is this? Oh, that's the profession shit, isn't it? That's where you find list of forgotten realms. Hmm. Just I would search. I just randomly like put an elf, and then until you get a good. Oh, well, this is quite good. Um, because then you can choose one you like. Oh, Facebook. Where is Facebook? There you go. And you just like on the left. Just click Elf, yes. or on the right even, just press Forgotten Realms, Elf, 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 and it gives you a list of, like, Elves, that's our names, and then you can do Humans, can remember, you'll be an amalgamation of Humans and Elves, and it also tells yeah. you what race they are as well, uh, so from Forgotten Realms, so I just spam the Elf thing a ton of times until you find a name you like, Evening Fall, Moondown, Man, they repeat very fucking quickly. Go, that's disappointing. Um, Janel. Oh, I'll like copy and paste. This. Yeah, just so you're. So, what's your name then? Jor Jor Jorka Janel. Is that it? Um, I will try this one first. See what you think. It's on the Facebook. Facebook. Janel Kinkier. 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 I guess. Janel Kinkier. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah, let's go for that. And you have a name. Jal Kynkir. Sounds German, doesn't it? It sounds a lot German. Okay, so the way combat works is there's a surprise round first, so you determine if people are surprised. Um, you and the goblin, you, Mr. Spider, and the goblin have magically appeared on this uh, yep. plane, so neither of you are surprised <laughs> for some reason. What you want to do first is you... Oh my fucking god, should I save this? No, I don't. Roll initiative. To roll initiative, you go into your character sheet. On your core stats is initiative button. You click on your token, then you click that button. To roll initiative, character sheet, core stats, core stats, and two seconds. I just need to make the window a bit bigger there. Um, core stats, and then your token for this case a spider. Um, but obviously, you give me a picture of what you want your guy to look like, and I will use that. For cool. example, you'll be able to explore. You can see what the other guys have done if you look around in the bottom right and up the in the middle of the road. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, God, I'm trying to navigate this. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah, no, I can see that. Um, right, so I've got the initiative and the core stats. Screen. Yeah, so click your token first, so the spider in this case, and then click initiative. Fantastic. Nice. Very, very high initiative there. Um, why does my escape? Keep going to online and then it auto accepts. Um, so you go first. You got 23, the higher number is better. You get to do first. You see this goblin stand there with a short sword and a shield in front of you. You burn. Hey, I don't hear you. And then next. So it's you, you to go. So what would you like to do? So you can the way the way it works. So we'd say you've got your two short shards in your hand at the moment. Okay. So you have your bonus action, your normal action, and your move. So you move thirty feet. Your action. There's a bunch of actions in the combat chapter which you should look over before you before Wednesday. But basically, you can attack, um, and then you use your bonus action to use your second short sword attack. So cool. what, would, what would you like to do? Close the gap initially. Okay. So that would be three or four spaces. If you drag your spider to the space in front of oh, the right. goblin and then press space. There we go, 15 foot. 15, so plenty, plenty, plenty of space. And also there's a ruler in the top left that you can you can use to actually measure it if you're ever, ever wondering. Oh. But it doesn't, doesn't come up very often. So you, you, you close the gap with the goblin, walk towards it with your... Uh, two short swords and you want to attack it. Yes. So to attack it, you're using a short sword, which is a finesse weapon, so you can use your dexterity for that. So roll a d20, plus your dexterity, plus your proficiency bonus, because you are proficient in martial weapons, which a short sword is. So, slash r d20, plus uh, my dexterity bonus is four or six. Four. Not too sure. Four, cool. And that gives me a six. And plus your proficiency bonus, which is another plus two. So as to go on your first swing, you miss terribly. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. the second worst roll you could have got. But on your second <laughs> swing, you've used your bonus action to use your short sword. Yeah. So go ahead and... Slash R, D, 20, and then same equation again. Plus four, plus two. Plus four, plus two. Two is because you're proficient with the sword. Me too. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> you roll the worst and the second worst possible rows. So you blindly swing your swords in there, realizing that as a spider, you really don't have the capabilities of a man-made weapon, and you fail yeah. to strike the goblin at all. He's got, he's he had a shield up to defend himself, but upon seeing you swing, he just like laughed at you when watched <laughs> and at this point he's going to swing his own um, short sword at yourself trying to cut off one of your wee spidery legs he rolled a natural one as well the lowest possible score so he was in too too much fits of laughter 
uh, your terrible swordsmanship. That his sword is just like all over the place, and it's it's just a, a nightmare. Um, and now it's your go again. Right. So attack again. I imagine. Yeah. Just do the two so, same rules. Or the two rules. Sixteen. Does. Sixteen is a hit. You manage to get by his shield through his leather armor and cut his flesh. For damage, a short sword is d6. Because you're using it finesse, you get plus your dexterity bonus, which is... So R d6 plus 4. Yep. And, and you brutally calm the goblin's uh, throat, blood spills out over their face, and he falls. A little laughter gurgling from him. And there you go, that's combat. Cool. Very easy. Easy peasy. Yeah. Totally easy. That's... So easy it is. And just wait till second level and then you get spells. It'll be so complicated. Um Yeah, and then that's that's how it works. And then initiative ends and time flows as normal again, basically. And of course you'll be doing that. There'll be twenty two goblins, there'll be hundreds of people. Um, plenty of for me to kill. <laughs> plenty to kill you too. So everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thanks, James, for joining us. Hope you enjoyed right. that and you'll you enjoy it on Wednesday night, I'm sure, as well. Um, um. For sure. Uh, for the people at home, that is UTC... I think it's half past eight we're playing 2030. Um, I think it's... Well, no, that's, that wouldn't be UTC, that'd be GMT. Uh, that'd be BST. UTC, it'd be 1930. Um, I, think, I think it's half past eight we're playing on Wednesday. Um, you can see all of our videos including this character creation if you've missed it if you've just joined us at youtube.com slash rmcd channel you can see the other four um, characters as well um, and the two sessions they've had already which have both had absolutely nothing happen <laughs> apart from them show how bad they are at the game hey, any any closing statements James? Um, not really just come along guys have a wee check out you know what I mean um, my first D&D game anyway um, so it should be fun. Great. All right. Cheerio, everyone. Bye-bye.